Mark, do you, do you, you know, you recall today when the officers stopped you? Yeah. Okay. They arrested you? Yeah. Okay. Did, did they tell you what they arrested you for? No. Did you wonder what they arrested yeah. you for? Yeah. I assume because I got talked to a detective um, about a month ago mm -hmm. and he mentioned my fingerprints. He wanted my fingerprints. I'm sitting there thinking, okay, okay, that's pretty weird. But, you know, tell me about it. What, what's going on, man? Well, we're looking into a number of uh, incidents, and uh, these involve some sexual assaults. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe for future videos. Computer. Finish my project on Mark Rudeau Baseline Killer Project 3. Pulling up Mark Rudeau Baseline Killer Project 3. Also, sub file audio of the interrogation. Hold on. I requested the whole interrogation, including the visual. What happened? No, the Freedom of Information Act request only gave us audio in the email file. Look around and find somebody who has the interrogation, so that way we can show these, show the audience. I scanned the internet and could not find anyone who has the video for public consumption. You're fucking kidding me. This is bullshit. Agreed. It has been some time and it should be released to the public. Are there any other files you need, Norman? No, continue uploading so I can edit this. Court records paint Gudo as a younger child in a family plagued by drug and alcohol abuse, a family in which at least six of 13 children are felons and at least four have done prison time. One remains in prison and another had his probation revoked last month. Gudo was born September 6, 1964 to Willie and Alberta and grew up in a Phoenix neighborhood near 12th Street and Southern Avenue. His mother was a maid, his father a lot attendant for car dealers on Camelback Road. According to court records, they divorced. An older brother said Alberta died in 1976 when Goudeau was 12. And the 13 children, seven boys and six girls, watched over each other. Goudeau was the second youngest. He and younger brother Marvin excelled at sports. Both played football for Corona del Sol High School in Tempe. Marvin went on to play college ball, but Mark never graduated from high school because he failed to complete all the credits needed. Older brother Oscar told the Republic that their upbringing was uneventful, at times idyllic. There was no violence in the house growing up, he said, although he admitted that their father was a strict disciplinarian. But court records for several of the Gudo brothers and sisters tell a different story. One quotes an older sister as saying that alcoholism ran in the family and that the children were verbally abused. And drugs have come up repeatedly in the siblings' court records, both as charges and as the reason things went wrong. Mark? Yay. Mark, I'm Alex Comedian. I'm a detective with the Phoenix Police Department. Okay. Um, first of all, I want to thank you for being patient with us. Mm -hmm. And I want to talk to you. Okay. Um, I know your past. I know you've been in prison. Yes. So you've been you've been around the block. Yeah. Okay. So you know, before I talk to you, I have to read you something. Your rights. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to read you those. Okay. All right. I want you to relax. Okay. Okay, hey Mark, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to the presence of an attorney to assist you part of questioning and to be with you during questioning if you so desire. If you cannot afford an attorney, you have the right to have an attorney appointed for you prior to questioning. Do you understand those rights? Yes, I do. Okay, Mark, were you born in Arizona? Yes. Born and raised? Yes. In Phoenix? Yes. Okay. And did you go to school in Phoenix? Yes. What schools did you go to? I went to Rosalinda and uh, Corona del Sol. Okay, and Corona del Sol's high school? Mm -hmm. And you graduated? 
Uh, no, I dropped out in the uh, 11th grade. 11th grade? Yeah, actually my senior year I just didn't finish. I had a couple of credits short, I couldn't mark, so I quit. Okay, what, what, was, what was the reason for you quitting? Because uh, I, I didn't want to go back my senior year because I was older than everybody. Mm -hmm. Kid, you know, mom had passed, I really didn't have no influence, nobody pushing us, so mm -hmm. I just dropped out and started working, you know what I mean? Okay, so you had a tough uh, uh, life as a young, a young kid? Uh, no, I didn't. I had uh, everything a kid could want, I just... Okay. You had a mom and dad? I had a mom and dad. My mom passed when I was nine. My okay. dad stayed with me until just when I went to prison. He okay. passed away when I was in prison. What your dad do for a living? He was, uh, he owned a detail shop and he was an architect. Okay. Did you, uh, when you were in high school, uh, how were your grades? Uh, during football season, there were C. B, C, after football season, they fell down to D's. Okay. So you were, you were a ball player? Yeah, I'm a football player. Were you good? Yeah, very good. What position did you play? A free safety and running back. Did you? Mm -hmm. I was an ex ball player. <laughs> no, that's right. Yeah. That's cool. I was a free safety and I was a running back. Mm -hmm. It's coincidence, isn't it? I'm a little older than you, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, where did you grow up? Who are Marc Goudeau's parents? Marc Goudeau was born to parents Willie and Alberta, both of whom worked as car dealer lot attendants and maids, respectively. Marc Goudeau family, wife Marc Goudeau married Wendy Carr until 2006. The year the pair tied the knot is not available. Marc Goudeau children kids, his children are not known. He has a total of six siblings named Marvin Goudeau, Michael Goudeau, Wilma Goudeau, Marcus Goudeau, Oscar Goudeau, and Linda Goudeau. Most of the siblings were brought in for questioning and DNA testing. Where, where, what part of town did you live? Um, South Phoenix. Where about South Phoenix? Um, Broadway, I mean, uh, Boker, and between 16th Street and Rozier. Uh -huh. Yes, yeah, it's on 13th Street. It's in between 7th Street and 16th Street, between uh, Rozier and uh, Southern. Okay. What, uh, do you remember the exact address you lived in? Yeah, 1390 Spoker. Okay. And that's where you lived with your dad? Yeah. Okay. Did you have any brothers? Yeah, I had uh, six brothers and six sisters. Really? Yeah. Wow. Wow. So you have 13 in your family? 13, 13 kids? Me. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Is, you are, is your father still alive? No, my father passed uh, when I was in prison about uh, eight years ago. That's a shame. Mm -hmm. Good man? Very good man. What's your brother's names? Uh, the oldest, uh, Willie. Uh, young, uh, under him is uh, Oscar. Jeez, uh, I'm 40, 43. And where does she live? Phoenix. Okay. When, uh, how was it when you guys were growing up about or how things were? Was the money tight? Um, actually, you know what, all my family, it was really doing good, successful, so that's the beauty of having a big family, is that they kind of took us under their wings, you know, my brother, Willie, uh, all of them, Jean, I actually lived with Jean for a little while, you know, and uh, Phoenix when she stayed here, and she had a shop, I mean, my brother, you know, took over the detail shop for my dad, so, I mean, it was great, you know. Okay. Did, uh... <clears throat> When was when was the first time you got in trouble? Um, how many months? Probably twenty two, I think twenty one. I got a DWI. And yeah, then, yeah, yeah. And uh, then after that, uh, what what happened then? Then after that, I got. Um, the assault charge and armed robbery, and that's took damn near my whole life, you know. Trouble began for Marc Goudeau in 1982 when he was 18. He and one of his brothers were accused of raping a young woman. The brothers were never charged because the victim did not want to go forward with the prosecution. He was charged with trespassing for a bar argument in 1987 and with driving while intoxicated in 1988. 
In August 1989, again according to court records, Goudeau was charged with kidnapping, sexual assault, and aggravated assault in the beating of a woman with a shotgun and the chasing of two witnesses at the scene at 28th Street and Osborne Road. The woman said Goudeau raped her and tried to force cocaine up her nose, that he beat her first with a barbell and the shotgun, threw her in the bathtub, then beat her again in the parking lot. Goudeau said she had willingly performed oral sex on him and that they were about to take a bath when two people knocked at the door, a man who beat her up and another who held a gun on Goudeau. Goudeau was allowed to plead no contest to three counts of aggravated assault. In August 1990, before he had been sentenced, he pulled a gun on a cashier at a Fry's supermarket at 30th Street and Thomas Road and robbed her of about $8.50, then forced employees to follow him out of the store. He told a probation officer that he needed money for his crack cocaine addiction. Tell me about that time period. What, what happened there? Would you get sentenced to prison? Yeah, I got sentenced to prison. How long did you serve? I'd done 14 years in prison. 14? No. Yeah. In what prison? In uh, Douglas and Florence area. Okay, and when did you get out of prison? In uh, 2000. For, uh, yeah, 2004. Okay. When you got out of prison, well, let's, let's go back. When, before you went to prison, you were still with your dad? No, 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 no. I was with my fiance at that time. Okay. And who was that? Wendy. Wendy? Mm -hmm. My wife. And her last name? Carr. Carr. Good old. When, <coughs> when did, uh, when did you meet Wendy? Um, when I was 23. 23 years old? Yeah. Where'd you meet her? I met her at, um, what did I meet her at? Uh, Zazu nightclub. I think, I don't know the name, but I met her. Zazu's? I think so. Was that Camelback? Yeah, I think so. Camelback. Big nightclub? Yeah, big nightclub. <laughs> Been there, man. Back in the day. Why is it looking about different then, though? As is. Those are the days, man. A lot of women used to go there. Yeah, yeah. I went with my partner and he told me about it. We went up there and met her and been with her ever since. Really? Mm -hmm. What is, uh, do, when did you guys get married? Uh, I proposed to her before I went in and uh, I caught this case. Well, you know, what I went in prison for. And so we, it was counseled and when I went in about Two years that I was in, and, you know, I asked her again, and she said I did. So we got married. At, I think in '91, I, I I was in prison. In '91, would you get? Obviously, got married at the prison. Yeah, married at the prison. Okay. What does Wendy do for women? She's um, uh, like a consultant. She like help people when they lose a job. And counselor. Yeah, sort of, basically. Right? Employment counselor. Well, she, uh, I call it consultant because what she do is like when the company are or let them go, right. she go out and help them, you know, get back on track, you know what I mean? Huh. That's interesting. How long has she been doing that? For 14 years. 14 years? Yeah, about 10 for yeah, a long okay. time. And where do you guys live right now? Um, She lived there before you, you got out of prison? Mm -hmm. Okay, do you own that house or does she own the house? Mm -hmm. We, we own, don't convince me on it, but yes, we buy a house. You, you're, you're going to buy it or you own it? No. Well, we, we own it. I mean, we're paying for it. Oh, you're paying for it. You got a mortgage. Yeah, we got a mortgage. Okay, yeah, but. all right. Okay, very good. And you're working where? At BBP. BB? BBP, construction. And where's that located? On 67th Avenue and uh, Northern. And what do you do there? I'm um, a concrete finisher. And where did you learn how to do that? Uh, I had a 
little knowledge of it way back in the day, but when I was in prison, I actually worked on construction tool in prison. Good job. Know, yeah, doing gutters and ditches and doing it in double sidewalks and whatever. Uh -huh. So, so yeah. How long have you been working at uh, BBP Construction? Uh, for about... About two and two and a half years, about two years and two months, I guess. Two years, two months? I, yeah, I'm probably long or wrong, approximately, yeah. Okay. And does your job, explain your job, do you go out on job sites? Yeah, we, uh, it all depends. I, I'm on an eight man crew, so we um, meet up at the job and then we go out to jobs. And where, yeah. where do you meet up for the jobs? At the at the yard. Yeah. At the yard? Yeah. And the yard is at 67th Avenue? 67th Avenue in Northern. And then we probably go to 55th Avenue and Happy Valley somewhere in there. That's what we've been working at, or 19th Avenue. Okay. And, uh, and that's what you guys have been working for, what, for the last couple months? Uh, couple months. We just started this week at uh, Williams, off of Williams Road, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, 10, you know what I'm talking about. We're here in the hell out there. But but yeah, we just, actually I was based at Vistancia, and then I went to from uh, commercial, I mean from uh, residential to construction. That's how I got this, you know, crew right here. That's what I was working at, the Vistancia plant out there, the new homes. Where's that? On, um, it's off of uh, Happy Valley and uh, um, uh, what is that road? Happy Valley and uh, hmm. I can't think of okay. So your job changed. You have, and correct me if I'm wrong. You have a residential section and a commercial section? No, actually I was working, that's what I was trying to tell you, I was actually working uh, residential. Okay. And then it was more money into construction because basically all we went done was poured foundations out there with Sansa Plant. I've done that for like a year and a half too under this guy named Dave Diaz. Well, when some money came in, you know, up for construction, I took it and I ran. So I'm actually doing back to what I know, curb, sidewalks, gutters, the side of the street, you know. Is that more, is there more money in there? Yes, more money in okay. there. But you still work for this construction? Yeah, same company. Same yeah, company. Just different from, types of yeah, jobs. Yeah, still residential. I went to uh, construction. What other places, going back to when you first started working for this company, what year was it? What year was it? Mm -hmm. um, 2004. 2004. Mm -hmm. What was your first job? Where were you working then? 2004. Um, I worked for uh, Paramount Mundus. Um, no, you were you were working for BBP Construction. Uh huh. And and what jobs were you working for then? What oh, job sites? Oh, at uh, Estancia. That's basically what I was based at at Estancia. Uh, Happy Valley Road. That's where the uh, Happy Valley. And where what other jobs? That was it. Happy yeah. Valley. Happy Valley. That was it, and then when I left uh, residential, because basically what we did residential, we were there for like, you know, to the jobs, to all the homes get built, you know what I mean? But with the uh, uh, construction, then it's a little different because you got a crew and you got eight mans and you go out, you on the terrible sidewalk and put one back in, but, okay. There was no other job sites that you were? We we were we were, we've been out to your we've been out to the company. I worked uh, at at uh, um, 19th Avenue. I worked at 55th Avenue. Um, 19th Avenue and what? And uh, 19th Avenue and Happy Valley. Okay. And 55th Avenue and Happy Valley. Okay. And. Uh, Oh, Sonora Mountains on 55th and, you know what Sonora Mountains is? Yeah. It's on 67th Avenue in Happy Valley. Okay. And these are all north side? North side, and I just got it uh, on the west side. Where about? And, uh, at Watson Road and Broadway. It's, I would tell you, that's, I just know how to get there. Get on the 10, get off the 10, go to Pass Humor Road. 
Watson. Uh, Watson. Tyron Watson. I don't know Watson at. No. It's Jack River Road. Any other mm -hmm. road? Okay. Okay, so like about three roads after Jack River Road. And you make a left and you go to, um, you pass Yuma. You go all the way down to like, uh, oh, Broadway. Broadway, and you make a right and you run right into it. It's, uh, Brand new development homes ain't even been built there. They got model homes, but that's it. They'll be doing sidewalks and curves. And you do ever you ever do any jobs when you're working for this company in the uh, you know off of Buckeye Road? Buckeye Road. Hmm. South side. No, we worked uh, southwest. Southwest. We worked uh, Broadway. Um, Southern. How far is west? Um, Avondale, I think. Okay. How about what are the streets? Um, Broadway and uh, Avondale. Southern and and uh, uh, the road before Avondale. It's uh, 107th Avenue, 107th Avenue. Okay. And when were you working out there? Um, We talked to the, we talked to your boss and with the company. And uh, do you remember doing jobs up there on Buckeye Road or Lower Buckeye Road? Um, uh, you know, if I see the development, I might that I have. I don't know. I really don't know. You, you but you can't butt. just think off the top of your butt. Uh, no, no, because we know the places. They give us the job's name, like the house, the development name, and that's what we, you know, meet up at, you know, side of the road, and then we fall out of the bike there. Okay. Are you on parole? Yes. And how long are you going to be on parole? Uh, until December of this uh, uh, year. Okay. Tell me a little bit about when you went to prison. What what was the charge against you? Uh, armed robbery and uh, aggravated assault. Mark, do you, do you you know you recall today when the officers stopped you? Yeah. Okay. They arrested you. Yeah. Okay. Did, did they tell you what they arrested you for? No. Did you wonder what they arrested? Yeah. You for? I assume because I got talked to a detective. Um, about a month ago, mm -hmm. and he mentioned my fingerprints. He wanted my fingerprints. I'm sitting there thinking, okay, that's pretty weird. But, you know, tell me about it. What, what's going on now? Well, we're looking into a number of uh, incidents, and uh, these involve some sexual assaults. Okay. Well, you want my DNA? No, we, we, we already have your DNA oh. from, from the prison. So why don't you just match it then? Well, that's why you're here. That's Wait a minute. Here. Wait a minute. What you saying? What I'm saying is, is that we made a DNA match from oh your DNA. You got to be kidding me, man. No, we did. You got to be kidding me. No, I'm not kidding. And you're not surprised either, Mark. So oh, listen, God, I've been like Mark, 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 Mark. This is this has been going. We've been investigating this for a long time. Okay. Investigating this for a long time, Mark. Okay? And there is no doubt, based on the DNA that we found, and you can show the emotions that you are. I've been doing this for a long time. I wouldn't have you here if I had not done my homework. 
Okay? I would not have you here if I didn't do my homework. Okay? Okay. I understand that. All right. And the homework has been done. Okay. Okay? The DNA has been done. Okay. So I'm not here to, I wouldn't, you never saw me at your place talking to you. Because I wouldn't be talking to you until I had the goods. I got the goods. Okay. So, I just want to talk to you about this though. Okay. I mean, you seem like an intelligent man. You know what? We're done, man. We're so done here. We, we're totally done because, you know, I know you're going to smoke up my ass because I know damn where I ain't done none of this shit. That's why I was so... I even told them the text that I go down. I go in front of these people. Mm -hmm. I don't care what kind of homework you've done. All right. This conversation's over. I want to know you present, man, because it's a bullshit. I give you anything you want. DNA, fingerprints, anything, and I know it's a bullshit. Okay. And you know it. Bullshit. Okay. So I take it you, you want to return? Yes, I want to return, man. We're done, man. Okay. You know, because, uh, <laughs> We so done, man. I knew something was going on, but I didn't know what. I thought, you know, the whole fucking fingerprints and bullshit on sitting there, you got them already. Right. Put them in a different shirt to take photos. I'm thinking, wait a minute. But you know, I don't care because I already know. Okay. All right. You know? All right. You know, like I say, man, I'm, I'm sorry, but you know, I, I know you sure. do what you do. And you know, like I say, man, I'm, I'm going to fight this man because it's bullshit, you know, straight up bullshit. Dude, just telling me, don't worry about it, man. When they get to talking to you, you know, when you're going home, I'm like, oh, I'm like, all right, cool. And, you know, and the detective told me straight out, he said, I'm going to call you in and get your fingerprints. So when all that shit today, man, that's, all I can think about is my wife right now. That's all I can think about, man. Okay. You know, and sure. I can look at you right now and I can tell you that. You know, period. You know, I'm not, man, I'm not, man. <sighs> no, no, sir. I'm not going out like that. And, you know, because uh, that's bullshit, man. I mean, started this week.